Hello, my name is Megan Fink and I'm currently in the VRT and O&M program at Hunter College. So for this video, we're going to talk about a lot of personal management. So to get started, we want to talk about like um, clothing management. Um, so for someone who may be visually impaired um, or completely blind, they need to be able to figure out what clothes go together, um, maybe colors. Um, so a good way to identify um, depending on, there are certain strategies, so maybe with low vision. Um, right here I have some colored hangers, so I have a blue hanger, a green hanger, and a black hanger. So this can be one trick, um, maybe if the person has trouble identifying colors, and then even labeling, maybe like up top, like blue hanger, um, green hanger, and then maybe even matching that color shirt or pair of pants to the hanger. Um, so that may be one trick that may be used. Um, hangers can also, if they're hanging shirts, um, it may be good to have something like um, for the Vox Com cards um, and even like taping it to here. Um, that may be one trick used. Um, here I have an example of like a red shirt um, and I have, I do not have a Vox Com, so I don't have Vox Com cards. But if they were to read it out, I'd have plain red top, um, long sleeve, and then almost identify what it do does not go with. So do not wear with maroon pants, floral pants, um, green pants, any of those kinds of colors are gonna conflict or you're going to look like Christmas colors if you wear green and red together. Um, another way to maybe identify is where the label of the shirt is by using either um, large print washable like labels or braille labels in order to identify um, the different kinds of clothes you are wearing. Um, other tricks, we have the safety pins, um, maybe for certain tops. Also, if you are uh, legally blind or completely blind, uh, different shirts may have different textures. Um, so I may be able to identify certain clothing that I own based on that. So those are some tricks when it comes to clothing management. Um, for shirts that you may wear, um, and if you eat out and get something on them, they may be stained. So I have a shirt here with a stain on it. So a good way to be able to identify this for when I'm doing laundry next to identify where the stain is, um, I have a safety pin in my hand or a baby pin whatever you want to call them. Um, and I would pin this to the shirt in that location. So right now, right where part of the stain is, I have a baby pin. So it helps when putting stain remover on um, so that you're able to identify certain things. Um, when it comes to shoes, I have currently um, on my floor, I actually have a shoe organizer. So um, it has a little, um, things in between so that it separates different shoes. So that may be a good position to also uh, put braille or um, large print labels. Um, different shoes also have different textures. So um, some of my sneakers, my Converse are gonna feel different maybe than my Nikes and I can feel the swoosh mark uh, or check mark. <laughs> um, so this is a good thing. I think also shoe racks are very helpful for identifying different shoes because you can add labels wherever. Um, it mostly focuses on organization when working with clothing with people who are visually impaired, putting different, uh, maybe short sleeve shirts in one drawer, pants in another, dress pants, and then separation by maybe like color sometimes. So it all depends on the organization space you have. Um, other than shoes, uh, some people may use shoe boxes. If they buy maybe two pairs of shoes in the same color, they can label the box, um, one brown, one black, so they're not mixing them up. Um, I've mixed up Uggs myself in the past because I had two similar pairs. So it's good also to label them so you're not wearing mis mismatched shoes to work. And it's similar to situations with accessories like belts um, and all that. So that's more of hangers and everything. So now I'm currently in my bathroom. So right now I have my toothbrush. So for brushing teeth, um, there are a couple different ways to do it. 
Um, a good tool is to use uh, your finger and align it along the bristles so that you can squirt the toothpaste on it a certain way so that it aligns so you are able to tell how much toothpaste is going on. So as I can tell, I got a lot um, on the bottom half and not as much on the top and I'm able to identify that with my finger. So that's one use for a toothbrushing. Our textbook also talks about how you could squirt toothpaste in your mouth, but I don't think a lot of people are just going to just squirt toothpaste. Um, when it comes to hair brushing, um, it's good to, uh, certain people may have different hairstyles, so there are certain bristles to different brushes, um, but it's really important with your hair, uh, you have a part. So it's making sure that you take your, you can take your nail of your fingers and run it along that line and you're able to then separate your hair. Um, by that and it's just making sure that your hair is all brushed and has no knots so you may have to just go through it a couple times that's the best way to brush your hair um, for organization in the bathroom um, it depends on what shampoo and conditioners you buy um, so when it comes to right now I have two different bottles in my hands because um, they are different companies as well so some people may use just whatever um, they're looking for so but a good way to maybe like if you buy the same company and it's the same shape of the bottle to maybe identify between shampoo and conditioner I have a hair tie um, right now on one of the shampoos um, this is a different bottle of conditioner so it's very big and wide so I'm able to tell this is actually I think a shampoo as well yeah this is a shampoo as well but um, certain shampoos and conditioners come come in different bottles so but if you need to identify them, um, maybe a good way is just buy a hair tie or a rubber band. Um, I'm not going to talk about it too much, but talking about like shaving, uh, I don't have a razor on me. Um, so for girls, I do not use the disposable razors. I have an actual razor with the blade. I think with disposables, it's easier to cut yourself um, just from experience myself. Um, but for shaving, whether it be for girls or guys, um, guys, uh, you can use on your faces. It's, um, I believe it talked about ears as a landmark. So your ears, you know, to start with like shaving up towards here and using your ears and shaving cream down, um, you know, your nose, if you have a mustache and face up and it's mostly just by the technique. So shaving can actually be more tactual, um, so it's do, just doing the same motions, um, you know, 90 degree angle down, same with a uh, woman shaving their legs, um, just moving the razor either for girls will move it upwards. I believe for guys it's more downwards. I could be incorrect on that. I um, have to double check that. Um, but it's mostly using your uh, like lamp, different landmarks on your face um, and then just doing similar motions. Um, and then even when you finish, you're able to feel your face um, and feel maybe places you've missed and then go back and fix them that way. So those are different methods for like shaving um, that can be very helpful. Um, I believe that's it in the bathroom. I'm gonna be moving from different place to different place. It's a fun midterm. All right, so makeup. I, so being a girl, we focus on, of course, I think every girl, or primarily a lot of women like having the ability to put on makeup. So, right here, I actually have a mirror and it's two-sided and it's regular mirror magnification on one side normal. And then I actually use, I believe it's 10 times magnification. So for low vision, um, there's different types of magnification mirrors um, that may help. Um, for anyone with low vision who wants to do makeup, that's a good trick. Um, so for me, when I do makeup, I always have handy dandy uh, makeup removers in case I accidentally slide my black uh, liner on the side of my face. I'm able to feel that that line just went on my face. So it's also good for that. Um, so for makeup in general, right here, I have, um, this is a good example of an eyeshadow palette. Um, so I believe our best bet for this right now, in between the shadows, there's 
barely any space. So if I were to label um, this palette, I would primarily do it maybe from the back side and so that it would line up with each color it was going to in the inside. Um, and that's just a little trick I would use. Um, or maybe creating a sheet, like to keep your makeup organized, it's good to maybe put it on a tray um, just to know where things are and keeping it organized. I have a makeup organizer actually, um, but I have all my makeup out right here right now. Um, so those are little tricks and maybe creating a sheet of each eyeshadow um, by each row. So one, two, three, four, five. So there's five up top, six in the middle and five on the bottom. So if you create a sheet, five, six, five, then you're able to tell what shades and then maybe give an explanation of what shades and then creating a sheet, maybe what shades go with what for you have your lid and then you also have your crease area, um, which you can feel with your bone. Like it's the bone area where uh, eyelid, you know, you feel your eyeball underneath. So these are little tricks maybe when doing eyeshadow. Um, with makeup, it's also important to remember like landmarks. So cheeks are for like blush area. Um, and mainly for girls, if you're gonna wear foundation, it's also good. Um, I would recommend that a lot of girls or women go to maybe like Sephora or Ulta or something to get, um, I know they do exact color match. So you never want to go to a store and just pick out a color yourself or else you're going to maybe look either darker or lighter. Um, they are the professionals and they know exactly what can go with your skin. Um, so I believe in foundation. If you're going to use foundation or anything um, like concealer that you use those. Um, so primer is good to make sure that the foundation actually sits and stays on your face. Um, when using like foundation for me, and I know I've also watched Molly Burke on YouTube, who's a um, blind woman, um, and she'll um, use her fingers a lot because she is completely blind. So if you feel with your fingers, you feel tactually. Um, so it's easier when applying foundation and then you can go in after and use a blending brush to make sure that your makeup is all blended out. Um, so those are little tricks. Um, with eyes, it's good to, if you're using liner, mascara, to also just have a feeling with one hand of maybe where it is and then making sure you pull and there are all these little tips and tricks that we can use for makeup. Um, but primarily landmarks, amount of brush strokes. Um, those are just little things for makeup. Um, moving stuff out of the way. I'm going to So next we can talk about actually um, medication management. So I have two different sets of pills here. Um, so as we talked about, there are all these apps or you can use um, script talk if you need to identify um, maybe that. Um, also, oops, sorry, my camera. Technical difficulties. Um, so with these, you can also go to your pharmacist and they can also give you like, um, large print labels or they have the thing for the script talk, which creates the auditory. Um, so from what I've seen from low vision, I actually observed a VRT recently and she would use a black felt tip marker and she was working with someone with low vision and they had a bunch of pills and she would label them. Um, so he would have cholesterol pills. So she would lab label it C L like for cholesterol. And then maybe with something with heart, maybe an H, or she would also go by the names of the, um, medication. Um, so this one is labeled with, um, this is a B like this one starts with a B. So I may take my felt tip marker. And I may just label it with a B. So these are like little tricks. Um, I also have, um, I've learned from different VRTs that Michael's, oh, wrong end. Um, like Michael's and all these craft stores can also be your best friend. Um, this isn't too big. This is like a B that is um, slightly, um, has a little bit of glitter on it, but um, 
you can buy these in like certain stores and I can tactually then put this on the pill bottle um, and label with a big B. So then whoever can also feel with this tactually, so then it gives it a letter. Um, you can also create braille labels to put on um, for the different medications. Um, it all depends on what you need. Apparently Android has the Script Talk app. I was looking on iPhone, I did not see it. So those are little things with um, when it comes to medication. Um, I also witnessed um, Sunday, Monday, like their little pill bottles with um, SM, T to also put your pills in that for the week. So it may help more with someone who may be more elderly and for didn't know if they forget to take their pills. Um, that could be a good method. Uh, they also have bigger ones that are for like morning, afternoon, night um, pills. So they're a little bit thicker, um, but it's good um, to separate your pills and then label them. Um, so those may be a certain certain pill medications. Um, and we can go over here and we can go over to ironing. Just trying to get this camera straight. Perfect. All right, I'm going to go grab actual weight shirt. Sure. ironing um it depends on certain irons so if you are maybe blind it may be easier for you right now I currently have my iron plugged in it is not on so yeah um if you are trying to find the iron it may be easier to follow the cord right now my iron is sitting up um so in order to find the handle I could follow the cord and find my iron um mine has a lot of weird settings so another may be to label um depending on someone's memorization. Right now, mine is fully filled with liquid, but what I can do is um, the funnel area, um, like to get water in, is to funnel it in. So right now my iron just clicked on because I tilted it forward. So that's how my iron turns on. It also automatically turns off. Um, so for ironing, it's like the motion um, is a good way to remember it and different patterns of which way you're going. You can also feel for any wrinkles that may be on a shirt. Um, these are a few things. Some people may use steamers. Um, it all depends on the person, but for ironing, um, I like to like lay my clothes out. Um, don't like go over the iron. Um, it's probably better to lay this out before even touching the iron and making sure it's on. Mine just tilted forward, so it turned on on its own. Um, but yeah, and just going in simple strokes, I go from, and I'll just go across, spray some water, and I'll go in certain motions. So I like to go in like circular motions and then like up and down. Um, so it all depends on the person like that is using the iron. Um, there's also, um, from what I've learned, there's also like downy wrinkle release where you can spray it on a shirt and then run your fingers through it, and it also will um, take the uh, wrinkles out. So these are little tricks I've heard. Um, it's always good to identify your clothes to make sure um, some may be uh, dry clean only, so you're gonna have to bring those to the cleaners. So it all depends on what you're doing. All right, so moving along to the kitchen. So, in the kitchen, I have like a countertop. So right now I have Lysol cleaning products. So a good thing to do with your cleaning products, always <laughs> label them. Um, so either braille labels, large print labels, tactile labels, um, and making sure it's all clean. Um, so right now I have an open surface area. So um, I'm going to grab some paper towels. I'm personally gonna spray the surface. So you can either like spray the surface, you can spray um, on the paper towel, it depends. I go in sweeping motions. Um, I prefer like circular motions. Um, there's also like up and down depending on the motions, but it's going over that area uh, maybe a couple times to clean it. 
um, up and down. It's just creating different methods um, so that you can feel and assume when something may be clean. Um, so right now, I'm trying to best thing to do for here. For sweeping, I have a broom right here, um, and it's easier to see. I have crumbs on the floor. Um, so I don't have a dustpan. We don't use dustpans in my house. So the best way I believe to do this is, um, of course, getting the position that you would with the broom. And I like to sweep from like up to down um, in like certain motions to make sure it's all in. And then sometimes I'll do to get all the like things closer together, um, a little left to right and bringing it in. So then it creates like a little circular motion. So I know it's all together. Um, and like, yeah, I'll sweep from side and then like up and down. Those are different methods. And then I think it's easier to use the dust buster because it's like it's all in one spot and then it picks it up all on your own so you're not using a dust pan and then carrying it to the uh, garbage pail. So it's whatever's most efficient for you. Um, so I'm going to do this and just... <laughs> And when using the dust buster, it's good to also like just to identify uh, feeling it after, maybe feeling the floor, making sure the area is all clean beneath you. Um, these are just a few little tips and tricks to use. Um, but as of right now, um, that is as much as I can think of for personal management. Oh, um, also when washing your clothes, um, I don't have it right now. I actually have a black hamper right here. Um, but uh, it's also important to think about your darks and lights. So there are certain hampers that you can also use that separates, um, has like a separation in it for darks and lights. So it's easier to think about when doing your laundry. Um, so it's already separated for you. Um, and then we talk about when pouring for certain liquids, uh, like detergent, um, primarily use either, it's easier to use some Tide Pods or maybe using your finger for detergent. Um, uh, to feel when it gets to the top. So these little ticks, uh, tri <laughs> um, tricks help um, assist people who are legally blind or completely blind. Um, that is what I can think about for uh, personal management. Thank you for watching and have a good day. Thank you.